Senate will come to order, and I ask everyone present to please rise and repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance. In the absence of clergy, may we please bow our heads in a moment of silence. Reading of the journal. In Senate Monday, June 2nd, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal of Sunday, June 1st is read and approved. On motion, Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal stands approved as read. Presentation of petitions. Messages from the Assembly. Secretary will read. On page 27, Senator Bonasek moved to discharge from the Committee on Judiciary, Assembly Bill Number 9576, and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 7078, third reading calendar 427. Substitution so ordered. On page 59, Senator Savino moved to discharge from the Committee on Local Government, Assembly Bill Number 7018, and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 4824, third reading calendar 884. Substitution so ordered. Messages from the Governor, reports of standing committees, Reports of select committees, communication, and reports from state officers, motions, and resolutions. Senator Libis. Okay, uh, Mr. President, before we uh, do motions, uh, if the members could uh, just kind of pay attention, there's going to be two committees called immediately, and then at some point we're going to do rules, but we have to have these committee meetings first. The first one will be the Health Committee. The Health Committee will meet immediately in Room 332. That's the Health Committee. You will meet immediately in Room 332. Will they meet after that? The Health Committee. Local governments will meet in 332. After the Health Committee, local governments will meet in 332. Committee right now in 332, and uh, local governments to follow in 332. There will be a media meeting of the Health Committee um, in room 332, followed immediately by the Local Government Committee in the same room. Mr. President, uh, Senator Hannon has come up with a, a very good point. Uh, I will let members know that after session, transportation will meet and labor will meet, and we'll give you the actual locations at the end of session. So after session, uh, transportation and labor will meet. And if, Mr. President, at this point in time, you could call on Senator Valesky and then come back to me, I would appreciate that. Senator Valesky. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on page 66, I offer the, the following amendments to calendar number 964, Senate Bill 6847. I ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Senator Libis. On behalf of Senator Nazolio, I move uh, Senate print number 4054A, calendar number 244, uh, to the order of third reading. Uh, and it, I want to move it to the Committee on Consumer Protection with instructions to strike uh, the enacting clause. So ordered. Uh, Mr. President, a very important one. On behalf of Senator Libis, <laughs> on page 31, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 505, Senate print 6769B, and as I said, retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Uh, Mr. President, at this time, I would like to take up the reading of the non-controversial calendar. Secretary will read. Calendar number 62 by Senator Zeldin, Senate Print 1687A, Enact Amend the Public Authorities Law. Read the last section. Section 5, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 168 by Senator Young, Senate Print 4396A, Enact Amend the Soil and Water Conservation Districts Law. 
Read the last section. Section 2 of this act shall take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stewart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 257 by Senator Young, Senate Print 4356A, an act amend the Soil and Water Conservation Districts Law. Read the last section. Section 2 of this act shall take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stewart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 314 by Senator Galvan, Senate Print 6598B, an act in relation to authorizing. There is a home rule message at the desk. Read the last section. Section 5, this act shall take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. Calendar number 427 by a member of the Assembly, Weinstein, Assembly Print 9576. The bill is laid aside for the day. Calendar number 432 by Senator Laval, Senate Print 5268A, an act amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act shall take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 673 by Senator Felder, Senate Print 7215, an act amend the Family Court Act. Read the last section. Section 2, this act shall take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. <clears throat> Calendar number 692 by Senator Laval, Senate Print 2282. An act of the education. The bill is laid aside temporarily. Calendar number 739 by Senator Latimer, Senate Print 5352A. An act authorized. There is a home rule message at the desk. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 807 by Senator Laval, Senate Print 3884A, an act amend the environmental conservation law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 809 by Senator Breslin, Senate Print 5714B, an act amend the environmental conservation law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 818 by Senator Grisanti, Senate Print 3009, an act amend the vehicle and traffic law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. Calendar number 884 by Member Assembly Abate, Assembly Print 7018, an act amend the town law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. I announce the result. Ayes 43, nays 2, Senators DeFrancisco and Gibson recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 902 by Senator Gallivan, Senate Print 4772A, an act amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. Calendar number 913 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 5224, an act amend the mental hygiene law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 929 by Senator Maziar, Senate Print 1081B, an act amend the New York State Urban Development Corporation Act. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 931 by Senator Grisanti, Senate Print 1703A, an act amend the education law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 1st of July. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Calendar number 936 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 3245, an act amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. Calendar number 956 by Senator Little, Senate Print 6946, an act amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. 
Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. Calendar number 958 by Senator Mazia, or Senate Prince 7007A, an act directing. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. Bill is passed. Calendar number 961 by Senator Gallivan, Senate Print 4129A, an act amend the Alcoholic Beverage Control Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skello, Stewart Cousins, Zelvin. Announce the result. Ayes 45. The bill is passed. Senator Libis, that completes the reading of the non-controversial controversial calendar. Motions and resolutions. Thank you, sir. I want, to, um, I want to adopt the resolution calendar with the exception of resolution 5539, 5595, 5613, 5615, and 5633, and 5574. All in favor of adopting the resolution calendar, with the exception of resolutions 5539, 5595, 5613, 5615, 5633, and 5574, signify by, by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution calendar is adopted. Mr. President, at this time there is a resolution by Senator Grisanti, 5574. Could we read the title and call on Senator Grisanti? Secretary will read. <laughs> Legislative resolution number 5574 by Senator Grisanti, memorializing Governor Andrew Uncomo to proclaim June 1 through 7, 2014, as CPR AED Awareness Week in the state of New York. Senator Grisanti. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my fellow colleagues, you're going to see a lot of individuals from around this great state of ours uh, in the LOB and in the well that have bleaking hearts on their lapels. Those hearts signify what they are trying to do in that passage of CPR teaching in high schools. Now, you may not think about it, but you should listen to some of your constituents that are coming to see you today. Tell them to talk to the assembly members to get this taken care of. 16 states now require students to learn CPR. If given right away, CPR doubles or triples survival rates. Nearly 424,000 people have cardiac arrests outside of hospitals every year and only 10.4% survive. It's easy, it's fast, it's simple to learn. We've done pilot programs in our area in Western New York. We have individuals here from, from the Western New York region. JJ, I want you to stand up. This young man, this young man is here today, is alive today because he was given CPR while, he, while basically at cardiac arrest in high school. He's alive here today. He's a strapping, tall young man. Those are his parents next to him. We have the rest of the group with their flashing heart lapels. There's more. This is something that's a no-brainer, my fellow colleagues. CPR in high school saves lives. Imagine having tens and tens of thousands of students that know CPR. They could be anywhere. They could be in a restaurant. They could be on the street corner. They could be in the high school. They could be in college. Somebody goes into cardiac arrest, they'll have the skill to get that individual that man, that woman, an extra four to five minutes of life and the possibility of staying alive. So I want to thank you for your advocacy, JJ. Fantastic. I want to thank your parents, everybody that's here for the advocacy. Mr. President, thank you very much. And whoever wants to join on the resolution, and please help get this, this law passed. Thank you. Any other senator wishing to speak on the resolution? Seeing none, the question is on the resolution. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted, and welcome to the uh, Senate Chamber. <laughs> Senator Libis. Uh, Mr. President, if you give me a second here, we're just trying to coordinate between members that are at the two committee meetings. Uh, just give me a second. Mr. Zanti would like to open his resolution up, so as the policy goes, if someone chooses not to be on it, Please let the desk know. So ordered. Uh, 
part here. Uh, resolution 5595 and 5615, uh, we just need to adopt those right now. They were pulled from the calendar, but we just need to uh, um, adopt them as we would the resolution calendar. The question is on those two resolutions. All those in favor signify by, by saying aye. Opposition nay. Both resolutions are approved. Th thank you, Mr. President. Open. In 5595, a uh, sponsor would like to open uh, for sponsorship. So if anyone chooses not to be on it, please let the desk know. So ordered. And um, these temporarily, I would tell members not to go too far. We're waiting for the committees to adjourn. And then we have some very important resolutions that we need to take up. Senate will stand at ease. that the health committee's uh, work is done and now the local governance committee is meeting and in the meantime I believe Senator Hoylman has resolution number 5539 it is at the desk um, he would like uh, it read in its entirety and then you can call on him secretary will read legislative resolution number 5539 by Senator Hoylman paying tribute to the distinguished life and accomplishments of Catherine Abate former New York State Senator whereas this legislative body is moved to recognize and pay tribute to the life and accomplishments of former New York State Senator Catherine Abate, an individual of distinguished purpose and enduring commitment, a woman who dedicated her life and career to public service. And whereas, it is with great sorrow and deep regret that this legislative body records the passing of Catherine Abate on May 17, 2014, noting the significance of her meritorious life and accomplishments. And whereas, during her diverse and far-reaching public service career, Catherine Abate served at nearly every level of New York politics, including grassroots organizing, advocacy, and city and state government. And whereas, after receiving her law degree from Boston University Law School in 1972, Catherine Abate began her professional career as an attorney at the Legal Aid Society in New York City, eventually becoming director of training in his criminal defense division. And whereas, in 1986, Governor Mario Cuomo appointed Catherine Abate to the position of Executive Deputy Commissioner of the New York State Division of Human Rights. She was appointed Chair of the New York State Crime Victims Board in 1988. 
in Juarez. Catherine Abate was appointed by New York City Mayor David Dinkins to serve as Commissioner of the New York City Department of Corrections in 1990. In 1992, she was appointed Commissioner of the New York City Department of Probation. And whereas in 1993, Catherine Abate was elected to the New York State Senate, representing the 27th District, which covered, which covered parts of Manhattan. She served with distinction for two terms and was the ranking Democrat on the Crime Victims Crime and Correction Committee, as well as the Investigations and Government Operations Committee. And whereas, although Catherine Abate left the New York State Senate at the end of, the uh, end of 1998, she did not leave public service. In 1999, she became president and CEO of Community Health Care Network, <coughs> where she made significant and lasting contributions in the area of public health. And whereas during her tenure at Community Health Care Network, Catherine Abate significantly expanded health care and social services programs for the underserved and developed innovative strategies and vulnerable segments of the LGBT population, including transgender people and those living with HIV AIDS. And whereas, Catherine Abate was a recognized expert on human rights, criminal justice, health care, and management leadership, who freely shared her knowledge and served on numerous government, professional, and nonprofit boards. And whereas, Catherine Abate's commitment to public service extended to, her, extended to her friendship and mentoring of numerous government, nonprofit, and labor sector leaders who served with her and after her. And whereas, Catherine Abate, throughout her career and life, served her community and the people of the state of New York with intelligence and carried dedication, contributing significantly to the quality of life of her constituents and the communities of the state of New York. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pauses deliberations to honor the memory of Catherine Abate, and be it further resolved that copies of this resolution, suitably engrossed, be transmitted to her husband, Ronald Kligerman, and son, Kyle. Senator Harmon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it is my um, solemn responsibility to stand and memorialize Senator Catherine Abate, um, whose district um, I have now the honor of representing the 27th Senate District. As you've heard, uh, Catherine passed away two weeks ago. She was a young 66 years old. Uh, her life on reflection really sums up uh, what Eleanor Roosevelt once said, which was, people grow through experience if they meet life honestly and courageously. And that's exactly what Senator Catherine Abate did through her long public service career. She had so many experiences in public life, um, ranging from the grassroots, when she was a district leader with the village independent Democrats in Greenwich Village, running through her career as a commissioner uh, here in the State Senate, where she served from 1995 to 1999, running for statewide office. And then, of course, her last 15 years of service were with the Community Health Network. Um, her long career, though, I think, represented so much that New York has to offer uh, in terms of its people, it's women uh, and those who care about the most vulnerable. She represented the most vulnerable uh, throughout her career with uh, dignity and grace, intelligence, perseverance. Uh, Mayor Dinkins said when he learned of Senator Abate's passing, she never shied from a just cause or a good fight. And I concur. Uh, her last weeks were very difficult for her and her family, um, but I was most touched by the fact that she reached out to people who she called the next generation of leadership. And she called me personally uh, as she lay in, the, in a hospice um, and imparted words to me that I won't forget which was that, Brad, your service is so important to the state and the city, is what she said to me. Um, I then went to her bedside later in the week, uh, as she did invite others who were the next generation 
of public officials uh, in New York. And um, I am so honored to discuss her life and service and extend my condolences, I know on behalf of all of my colleagues here, to her husband Ron and her son Kyle. She will not be forgotten. We will continue to serve in her memory and aspire to the high standards that she set for everyone in this chamber and across the state of New York. Uh, if I could ask Mr. President that we have a moment of silence for Senator Abate. I ask the chamber, we have other members wishing to speak on the resolution. Senator Nazario. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my colleagues, I share uh, Senator Hoyleman's sentiments uh, that it was my honor to work with uh, Catherine during her years here in service in this chamber. Uh, I worked with her as she was the ranking member of the New York State Senate Committee on Crime Victims, Crime and Corrections. And I was chairman of the committee during her tenure here. And as ranker, uh, the chair, she impressed me so much on the depth of her knowledge, her broad experience uh, as a commissioner of corrections, uh, one who understood uh, the correctional system uh, in this state extremely well, had many ideas, very creative approaches uh, to uh, corrections and how we could make the correctional system a better system, uh, that uh, her grace, uh, her ability to go across the aisle and work uh, towards a solution, uh, she was uh, yet a fiery uh, advocate on behalf of what she believed in. Uh, she could be uh, certainly uh, uh, standing up and disagreeing on principles, uh, but it was clear to me and uh, very uh, appreciated uh, that she could disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, that Catherine Abadi uh, will uh, enjoy uh, a wonderful legacy, a well-deserved legacy. Uh, that uh, she uh, was just as a as an, an aside, uh, one of her uh, big uh, objectives, important objectives, was to uh, ensure uh, the safety of all prisoners, but in, especially uh, those uh, women who were incarcerated in our state. And uh, together we worked on legislation uh, to uh, provide additional assurances and additional measures of security uh, for those uh, female prisoners uh, in our New York State correctional system. Uh, to that, uh, she worked uh, very, very hard, uh, very direct, and that uh, it was a pleasure uh, to have successes uh, that we share. Uh, that Senator Hoyleman uh, characterized the person extremely well, uh, one with uh, grace and charm, uh, one that uh, always uh, was uh, willing to uh, say hello, uh, willing to uh, get engaged in uh, conversation, uh, to be a colleague that uh, you just enjoyed serving with. And that, uh, Mr. President, thank you for allowing me to share uh, some personal reminiscences about a colleague who uh, we will miss. Uh, her passing was uh, too untimely, uh, too short was her life, uh, but she filled those years uh, with uh, distinction, uh, with honor, and uh, with very hard work. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Abadi will be missed. Senator Kruger. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to speak on behalf of the loss of my friend, Catherine Abate. Uh, both of my colleagues who spoke knew her here in the Senate. I actually didn't get to know Catherine, really to know Catherine, until after she left the Senate. Uh, we sat on a board of directors together. Uh, we worked on several important issues for women in the state together. Um, she was an extraordinarily helpful advisor to me as a candidate and a new senator. 
She hasn't had an extraordinary career, but I want to emphasize that she was just an extraordinary woman who had a generous heart, a generous spirit, was always willing to stand up and go out to help someone else, even though she suffered with the illness that eventually killed her for nearly the last decade of her life. And she went through ups and downs. But if you knew her, you actually weren't even sure she was going through a down health-wise because she was committed to the organization she ran. She was committed to the issues that she cared about. And she would be out there and around. And you would have to say, so how are we feeling right now? She'd go, well, I don't know. We're a little iffy on remission, but we're continuing. And her strength and her commitment and her belief in public service and her belief in helping others um, should be a model for all of us, not just who serve in the public eye, um, but she was a great representative to, of what it is to be a truly rounded and gifted human being um, in our state, and we will all miss her. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Little. And I would like to join with my colleagues just in um, speaking in memory of Senator Abate. I didn't know her through the Senate. I was elected to the Assembly in 1995, and um, my experience with Senator Abate was through the Women's Legislative Caucus. Uh, while we were on opposite parties, we also had districts that couldn't have been farther apart through mileage or through issues. But what I admired so much about Senator Abate was her, her demeanor and the way she respected others. She came to the legislative meetings, one of the few senators who did come to our legislative meetings, and was just very encouraging and listening to others and respectful of other people's issues. And it was always a pleasure to see her when she was here in Albany advocating, and she remembered me from then, and we would always talk. So uh, she is definitely a loss to her, her family and her friends, but to New York State as well. Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. I would I rise to echo the um, sentiments of many of my colleagues. Each of us knew her in a knew Catherine Abate in a different way. Um, one of my first political experiences in Mount Vernon was when she was running for Attorney General, and we were I was a brand new district leader, and I had a vote. And I want to tell you that I used that vote to vote for her. And it caused a lot of consternation because her opponent um, was someone that the men had already determined that they were going to support. But um, I, even though I made my case, that was my first real experience of standing in, in our um, headquarters and talking about the fact that we needed more women um, in the seats of justice and having had the experience that she had here in uh, the Senate working as Senator Zolio was saying on issues of people in prison but particularly women in prison. She had worked with Jean Harris and the cases there with a lot of the women in Bedford and so we knew her and we felt we knew her intimately. Well later I did get to know her intimately and I shared that story with her and she said yeah Reggie told me that you were one of the loud voices that, that supported me and I will always appreciate and thank you for that. And I think, like Liz, I have attempted to continue the work that she has begun here, working with people in the correction system, ensuring that women in prison get a fair opportunity to uh, receive good training, to receive the psychological support and help that they need. And many times when women come home from prison, their experiences are very different from men because many times their children have been taken away from them, their families have been dispersed, and they have to start life all over again. And they become ostracized. And so that I have always appreciated, even until her death, her work with women, uh, NARAL and some of the other organizations that she was very prominent in to make sure that women got the best opportunity and the fair shake in this society. So I thank um, uh, my colleague, Senator Hoyleman for bringing this resolution, giving us all an opportunity to share and celebrate a woman's life who has been extraordinary to the state of New York. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Montgomery.
Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to also uh, uh, offer my condolences to the family of Catherine Abate and uh, to say thank you to uh, Senator Hoylman for uh, giving us an opportunity to express uh, our sentiments. And I want to say that uh, Catherine Abate was certainly a friend. I did serve with her here in the Senate, and uh, I, I appreciate the fact that she was very extremely uh, uh, brilliant as, uh, as a legislator, but uh, she always had a lightheartedness about uh, the issues that we had to deal with. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we shared was that she was a parent. She had a son uh, who she loved dearly and uh, missed a lot and was extremely frustrated uh, about the times that we had to be here and she could not be with uh, her son, appreciating what he was doing um, in, in school and at home. Um, and so that was one of the things that we shared as parents. Uh, the, the other issue that we shared a lot was care for young people, especially young women, and their access to health care, uh, including reproductive health. Uh, she was a, an extremely brilliant advocate, and uh, always that was number one uh, for her. So when she left Albany, uh, she became a voice for young women across the state uh, through her work uh, as the executive director of the uh, 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 health network. And I, I just recall uh, the, one of the stories that she shared with me as Commissioner of Corrections uh, in New York City uh, when there was a, a situation where uh, Reverend Al Sharpton happened to be in one of the facilities in the city uh, and she notified her people that whatever they did, make sure nothing happened to him and that she wanted him out of there as quickly as possible. And of course it was a laugh for us because we both understood what it meant if you had Reverend Al Shopton uh, in your care and, and, and you were authorized to make sure that he, his, uh, his safety was paramount. So uh, Catherine was uh, an, an extremely uh, dedicated and brilliant legislator, but she was also a person that you could really have a relationship with as a person, share with and appreciate uh, as a sister. And so uh, I really miss her. I have a lot of wonderful memories uh, of my experience with her. And uh, we all can take from her life the positive image that she projected as a, a woman in power who knew how to use it but also who was sensitive about the way in which she worked with people. So again, thank you, Senator Hoylman. I, I'm, I'm proud to say that you fill a wonderful person's chair in this uh, chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, I served with Catherine Abadi, and my memories are basically that she was bright, articulate, and passionate about, passionate about the causes that she thought was important. Uh, her reasoning was excellent on, on the floor. Uh, oftentimes she came to the wrong conclusions, but her, uh, she was an incredible senator in that people listened to her when she spoke. And people changed their minds, including me, about several of the issues uh, that uh, she advocated for. Uh, the other thing that uh, comes to mind as I'm, I'm listening to everyone is, you know, we get into this business and we're so intent on the issue of the day, uh, whether it's a substantive issue or a political issue. and uh, we sometimes forget that we're all mortal, that uh, we come here for a short, short period of time and try to do whatever we can. And it seems to me that 
my memory of Catherine also is that she was always advocating for something, but pleasant in the way she did it, uh, respectful to others in the way they did it. And I think that's a good lesson for me and for all of us, that as we're here for this short time, uh, we should conduct ourselves the way she did, uh, vigorously for her positions, but with respect and dignity uh, so that we can make this experience pleasant for everyone that's here. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Perkins. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I uh, want to first uh, thank uh, Senator Hoyleman for the, this opportunity to share some brief uh, uh, remarks and, and appreciation for uh, uh, Catherine. You know, I served with her too, but not here. <laughs> we served together as uh, Democratic district leaders uh, in the New York County Democratic Party under uh, the leadership of uh, Benny Farrell uh, at a very important period for that organization. Uh, it, was a, it was a period in which uh, we were moving from what one might call the regular backroom machine uh, operated type of a party organization uh, to a reform approach. After all, she was with the Village Independent Democratic Club. We were with the Sojourner Truth Democratic Club, and we considered ourselves reformers. And so we didn't want to see judges made in the back room. We thought of another process that was a little bit more democratic and open and, and maybe ba based on merit would result in a better uh, judicial bench. And so uh, under Denny Farrell's leadership, Assemblyman Denny Farrell's leadership at the time and still was the county leader, uh, we worked together and, and, and I believe that uh, we're able to be very successful in, in seeing uh, the judgeship uh, selection approach reformed and opened and being made more meritorious uh, and accountable uh, to our respective communities and uh, to, the, to the city at large. And so I, I want to remember in that regard, I'm sorry I missed the opportunity to, to share remarks at, at the, at the uh, service that they had for her, but uh, she was truly a wonderful person. Uh, and she was really very attractive as well to look at. Thank you very much. <laughs> Senator Squadron. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I didn't have the privilege of serving with Senator Abate. Um, uh, I got here actually a decade uh, after she left, and uh, I uh, also don't have the privilege of, of following her in her Senate seat. Senator Hoyleman does, and uh, both this resolution and the way he spoke, I think, uh, a, a real honor to her, and I thank him for that. But uh, much of her, the area she represented is now in my district. And uh, though we didn't know each other well, I was struck a full decade after she left office, uh, the extent to which she was still a force and a presence in the district. And folks in the Chinatown community and elsewhere who she had represented uh, many years earlier still felt a warmth and a connection to her. And she still felt that warmth and connection to her former constituents and her former community. And when you look at public service, when you look at elected office, uh, to have that kind of connection and warmth and commitment beyond just the preservation of this job, beyond just the uh, simple matter of a legislative map, I think is a great credit and a great statement about true public service and true commitment to public service. And so I want to honor her for that and wish deepest condolences to her family and thank her on behalf of constituents who she represented many years ago for her service to them and her continued commitment to them long after she served. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Libis. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, too, want to uh, stand and join my colleagues in remembrance of uh, Senator Abate. Um, I can remember her sitting right over here and uh, always having a, a smile on her face, but as Senator Perkins says, was still a, a very tenacious uh, politician who believed in what she believed in and, and worked very hard at it. Um, uh, as all of my colleagues said, you know, and I think reflecting on Senator DeFrancisco, uh, we are all here for a short time, and certainly the time that Senator Abadi spent in this chamber, um, I think, uh, was one where uh, she she fought hard for the causes that uh, she felt were important not only to her constituents but uh, to the people of the state. Uh, her 
loss at such a very young age is, is sad. Uh, I think that sometimes, uh, um, you know, when we sit back and reflect, we wonder um, why uh, someone that talented and someone who has uh, worked to help so many people leaves us at a, at a very young point in their life. But there's a reason for that because there's, there's a plan for, for every one of us. So um, I, uh, I join my colleagues in saying that uh, I, I will miss her and certainly not that I knew her that well, but just as a colleague, um, she was a good person and, and, a, and a darn good senator. Senator Stewart Cousins. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise and, and certainly thank Senator Hoyleman for this resolution. And really, in many ways, uh, in envy of so many of my colleagues that had the opportunity to serve with her here in this chamber or other places, I was not so lucky. And sometimes when you are hearing all of the things that people brought with them in their presence, you, you really feel like you, you lost out. I could say I lost out, but the reality is I didn't. When I decided to run for Senate, I was told that there are people you have to reach out to, and one of those people, not surprisingly, was Catherine Abate. And what she didn't do is tell me everything she'd done. What, the, what she did do was tell me what she could do for me. What she did do was lay a path that it was easy for me to follow. What she did do was to connect, connect me with other people. What she did do was reinforce for me the idea that women in this chamber can do great things and without ever touting her accomplishment, showed me how we could be effective. So I too give condolences to her family and certainly to all who will miss all of her talents, all of her skills, uh, the great stories, but Clearly, the memory of Catherine Abati will never fail. Thank you. Seeing no one else to speak, the question is on the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted based upon Senator Hoyman's request. I ask the Senate to rise for a moment of silence in memory of former Senator Catherine Abati. Thank you. Senator Libis. President, if we can go back to motions, I have a motion. I don't know if anybody else does. Um, motions and resolutions. On behalf of Senator Zeldin, on page 29, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 479, uh, Senate print 4757, as said, bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Senator President. Libis. There will be an immediate meeting of the Rules Committee in room 332. Immediate meeting of the Rules Committee in room 332, and the Senate will stand at ease. There will be an immediate meeting of the Rules Committee in room 322, um, and the Senate will stand at ease. Senator Libis. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I believe there's a report of the Rules Committee at the desk. Uh, could we have it read at this time? Secretary will read. Senator Skelos from the Committee on Rules reports the following bills. We'll Senate Print 442 by Senator Diaz, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 1410A by Senator Montgomery, an act to amend the executive law. Senate 2060 by Senator Latimer, an act in relation to authorizing. Senate 2619 by Senator Young, an act to amend the general municipal law. Senate 2948 by Senator Hannon, an act to amend the public health law. Okay. Senate 3143 by Senator Kruger, an act to amend the social services law. Senate 3667A by Senator Savino, an act to amend the general business law. Senate 3735 by Senator Little, an act to direct the Civil Service Commission. Senate 3740 by Senator Adabo, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 4444A by Senator Golan, an act to amend the civil practice law and rules. Senate 4898 by Senator Ravel, an act to amend the public authorities law. 
Senate 6193B by Senator DeFrancisco, an act in relation to certain agreement. Senate 6568 by Senator Galvan, an act to enact. Senate 6600 by Senator Klein, an act to amend the executive law. Senate 6694B by Senator Flanagan, an act authorizing. Senate 6786 by Senator O'Mara, an act in relation to making certain findings. Senate 6833A by Senator Farley, an act to establish. Senate 6975 by Senator Ritchie, an act to legalize, validate, and ratify. Senate 7030 by Senator DeFrancisco, an act to amend Chapter 690 of the Laws of 1937. Senate 7046 by Senator O'Mara, an act to amend the town law. Senate 7089 by Senator Avell, an act to amend the public authorities law. Senate 7119 by Senator Klein, an act to amend Chapter 507 of the Laws of 2009. Senate 7125 by Senator Hannon, an act to amend the Public Health Law. Senate 7133A by Senator Laval, an act in relation. Senate 7169 by Senator Boyle, an act to amend the Penal Law. Senate 7179 by Senator Valeski, an act to amend the Civil Practice Law and Rules. Senate 7238 by Senator Farley, an act in relation to authorizing. Senate 7276 by Senator Seward, an act authorizing. Senate 7279 by Senator Farley, an act to amend Chapter 168 of the Laws of 2012. Senate 7388 by Senator Grisanti, an act to amend the Village Law. Senate 7479 by Senator Bonasek, an act to amend the Town Law. Senate 7498 by Senator Martins, an act to amend the Nassau County Civil Divisions Act. Senate 7596A by Senator Martins, an act authorizing. Senate 7620A by Senator Laval, an act in relation to the alienation. Senate 7649 by Senator Marchon, an act to amend the public health law. Senate 7650 by Senator Carlucci, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. Senator Libis. Oh, oh, you're not done yet. Senate 7651A by Senator Carlucci, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. Senate 7652A by Senator Martins, an act to amend the Family Court Act. Senate 7653 by Senator Martins, an act to amend the education law. Senate 7654 by Senator Boyle, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. Senate 7655A by Senator Nozzolio, an act directing. Senate 7656 by Senator Nozzolio, an act to amend the corrections law. Senate 7657 by Senator Robach, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 7658 by Senator Nozzolio, an act to amend the civil practice law and rules. Senate 7659 by Senator Boyle, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 7660 by Senator Han, an act to amend the public health law. Senate 7661 by Senator Han, an act to amend the public health law. Senate. Senate 7662A by Senator Seward, an act to amend the insurance law. Senate 7663 by Senator Nozzolio, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 7666A by Senator Grisanti, an act to amend the real property tax law. Senate 7675 by Senator O'Mara, an act to amend the local finance law. And Senate 7691 by Senator Felder, an act to amend the education law. All bills reported direct to third reading. Senator Libis. Mr. President, I move that we accept the report of the Rules Committee. All those in favor of accepting the Rules Committee as read, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. Aye. Rules Committee is adopted. Senator President, Libis. President, can we go back to uh, motions and resolutions? Motions and resolutions. Thank you. Uh, Senator Hoyleman wanted to open up uh, his uh, uh, resolution 5539 honoring Senator Abadi to all the members, so if there's someone for whatever reason, chose us not to go on and let the desk know. So what it? Um, I have uh, a couple of housekeeping motions. On behalf of Senator Hannon, on page 34, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 561. Senate prints 6562A, and as I said, bill retains place on the third reading calendar. So what it? On behalf of Senator Marchion, on page, there's no page, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 1138, Senate print 7649. And as I said, Bill retain his place on the third reading calendar. So, Mr. President, it's up to you to find the page. <laughs> so ordered. 
And on behalf of Senator Seward, on page number 66, I offer the following amendment to calendar number 967, Senate print 4374, and as I said, bill return its, retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Mr. President, I believe that Senator Hassel Thompson has resolution number 5633 at the desk. We would like the title read, and uh, I would call on Senator uh, Hassel Thompson uh, for comments. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 5633 by Senator Hassel Thompson honoring Alyssa Diggs upon the occasion of her designation as the 2014 Mount Vernon Boys and Girls Club Youth of the Year. Senator Hassel Thompson. President, today seems to, de to be the day to honor women, and I have the pleasure of honoring a young woman from my district, Alyssa Diggs, upon the occasion of her designation as the 2014 Mount Vernon Boys and Girls Club Youth of the Year. This award is the highest honor that a Boys and Girls Club member can receive. It recognizes outstanding contributions to family, school, community, and to the Boys and Girls Club. As a member of the Mount Vernon Club, Alyssa has volunteered during the summer for summer programs and after school programs. As a volunteer in her church, she organizes bake sales, church plays, the Halloween Haunted House fundraiser, and is the assistant Sunday school teacher. She also spearheaded a food drive to help the homeless. Alyssa has volunteered more than 200 hours during the 2013-14 year and is now participating in the process of forming a Keystone Club, working to raise monies, money for trips to the National Keystone Conference next year. Alyssa Diggs plans to attend Fashion Institute of Technology, State University of New York in Manhattan upon her completion of high school, where she will major in fashion design and eventually pursue a career in fashion and event planning. I wish Alyssa Diggs continued success throughout her school years and I know that she will make us all proud. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Sanders on the resolution. Oh, not this one. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, the question is on the resolution. All in favor by saying aye. Opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted. Senator Libis. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, I believe Senator Perkins has a resolution at the desk, 5613. Uh, could we please have it read in its entirety and uh, I'll call on Senator Perkins, and I'm sure others will want to speak on this too. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 5613 by Senators Perkins, Stuart Cousins, Parker, and Sanders. Mourning the death of Maya Angelou, acclaimed African American poet, influential memoirist, and playwright. Whereas, it's the sense of this legislative body, representing the people of the state of New York, to pay tribute to an extraordinary woman of indomitable faith and dedication whose purposeful life and accomplishments will forever stand as a paradigm and inspiration for others. And whereas much admired African-American poet, storyteller, civil rights activist, and autobiographer Maya Angelou died on Wednesday, May 28, 2014 at the age of 86. And whereas born Marguerite Ann Johnson on April 4, 1928 to Bailey Johnson Sr. and Vivian Baxter Maya Angelou also, also had a broadcast, broad career as a singer, dancer, actress, composer, and Hollywood's first female African-American director. And whereas after her parents' marriage ended, three-year-old Maya, along with her four-year-old brother Bailey, was sent to live with their grandmother, Annie Henderson, in Stamps, Arkansas. And whereas, unable to pronounce her name because of, of a stutter, Bailey called her Mai for my sister. A few years later, when he read a book about the, the Maya Indians, he began calling her Maya, and the name stuck. Whereas, as a teenager now living with her mother in San Francisco, Maya attended Mission High School and won a scholarship to study dance and drama at San Francisco's Labor School. She dropped out of school to become the first black female streetcar conductor. And whereas, at the age of 16, Maya Angelou gave birth to her son, Guy, and worked as a waitress and cook to support them. She never lost sight of her dreams and talents for music, dance, 
performance and poetry. And whereas in 1952, she married a Greek sailor named Anastasios Angelopoulos, where she began her career as a nightclub singer, she took the professional name Maya Angelou, combining her childhood nickname with a form of her husband's name. And whereas in 1969, Maya Angelou's first of six autobiographies, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which describes in lyrical, unsparing prose her childhood in the Jim Crow South, was published. And whereas the other five autobiographic volumes include Gather Together in My Name, 1974, which begins when Angelou is 17 and, and a new mother. Singing and swinging and getting merry like Christmas, an account of her tour in Europe and Africa with Porgy and Bess. The Heart of a Woman, 1981, a description of Angelo's acting and writing career in New York and her work for the civil rights movement. And All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes, 1986, which recounts Angelo's travels in West Africa and her decision to return without her son to America. And whereas by age of 40, Maya Angelou was a Tony-nominated stage actress for the part she played, she, she played on Broadway in Look Away. The Reynolds Professor of American Studies at Wake Forest University, a ubiquitous presence on the lecture circuit. A frequent guest on television shows from Oprah to Sesame Street, and an actress who portrayed Kunta Kinta's grandmother in Roots, and appeared in How to Make an American Quilt. And whereas she was also subject of a series of scholarly studies, dancer, calypso singer, magazine editor, official of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and friend or associate of some of the most eminent American, African Americans of the mid-20s, including James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, Nelson Mandela, the Reverend Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Malcolm X. And whereas, as a renowned as she was for her memoirs, Maya Angelou was also remembered for her inaugural poem, on the Pulse of, the, of Morning, which she wrote and delivered in January of 1993 at the swearing-in of President Bill Clinton upon his request. And whereas, furthermore, Maya Angelou was invited by successive presidents of the United States to serve in various capacities. President Ford appointed her to the American Revolution Bicentennial Commission. President Carter invited her to serve on the Presidential Commission for the International Year of the Women. And in February of 2011, President Obama presented her with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor. And whereas, in addition to her six autobiographies, Maya Angelou's other books include the volumes of poetry, Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water for Before I Die, Oh Pray My Wings Are Gonna Fit Me Well, and Still I Rise, and Shaker, Why Don't You Sing. In addition, she released an album of songs, Miss Calypso, in 1957. And whereas throughout her writings, Maya Angelou explored the concepts of personal identity and resilience through the multifaceted lens of race, sex, family, community, and the collective past. As a whole, her work offered a sharp and clear examination of the ways in which the socially marginalized forces of racism and sexism played out at a level of the individual. And whereas Maya Angelou called Harlem home for over 50 years, and lived on West 120th Street in Mount Morris Park section of Harlem. She was known as a kind, compassionate, and generous neighbor to all. Furthermore, she gave her time, her voice, her words, and her inspiration to the community she dearly loved. And whereas Maya Angelou was a seminal figure in the Harlem Writers Guild throughout the 1950s and 1960s, and actively performed at the renowned Apollo Theater during this period, including appearances in Porgy and Bess alongside her dancing, dancing partner, Alvin Ailey. And whereas Maya Angelou was, was exceptionally active during the Civil Rights Movement, serving as coordinator of the New York Office of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and as co-founder of the Organization of Afro-American Unity, established in 1964 alongside Malcolm X. And whereas in 2010, Maya Angelou donated her archives to the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture at 135th Street and Lenox Avenue in Harlem. Over 340 boxes representing her life's work are household in the heart of Harlem, including a draft of her singular biography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, handwritten notes concerning her other timeless works and correspondence with James Baldwin, Malcolm X, and Coretta Scott King, among others. And whereas Maya Angelou fittingly became a national figure 
serving as an inspirational role model, her warm smile, true compassion, and sensitivity were generously given for the benefit of countless others and their quality of life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pauses deliberations to mourn the death of Maya Angelou, acclaimed African-American poet, influential memo memoirist, and playwright, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution, suitably engrossed, be transmitted to the family of Maya Angelou. Senator Perkins. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I rise uh, to honor perhaps the greatest and most inspiring Renaissance woman that ever lived, Dr. Maya Angelou. I thank my colleagues, especially Leader Stuart Cousins, Senators Parker, Sanders, Hatzel Thompson, and Montgomery for co-sponsoring this resolution alongside me. It is impossible to reduce the extraordinary life that Dr. Angelou lived to a few words. There is a universal and transcendental quality to the life she lived. She grew up one generation removed from slavery. She spent five years of her life entirely mute as a product of the omnipresent guilt she internalized when the man who raped her at the age of eight was killed. Yet, when she spoke again, she made the bearing of her soul and the fulfillment of her creative and social justice passions a calling for the highest order, one that has touched all of us here today and legions around the world. Dr. Angelou was a virtuoso. Her accomplishment in the creative arts spanned the entire spectrum, but that was really just a portion of her existence. She once said, quote, I have no skeletons in my closet. In fact, I have no closet, which explains why she shared the entirety of herself with the whole world. Dr. Angelou was a single mother who, as a teenager, made the practically painful decision to sell herself to support her son and herself. She subsequently traveled all over the world and immersed herself in different cultures and languages. She was a journalist in Egypt and Ghana during the decolonization movement. She was the first black woman to become a streetcar conductor and to write a screenplay. She was a contemporary of Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X in the civil and human rights movements. She was an educator, teacher, mentor, and perhaps most importantly, an inspirer. For all of her worldly accomplishments, Dr. Andrew was consummately, quote, regular folk, quote especially around Harlem. She conducted her regular, quote, sittings at her home on West 120th Street, inviting neighbors for hours of conversation, debate, and enrichment. I was honored to be at her home on multiple occasions and to have spirited discussions with her. You can often find her at the local fairway or fine fair, taking great care, purchasing groceries to prepare dinner for her guests. Additionally, she made regular appearances at the Faison Firehouse Theater, Mitten's Playhouse, Sylvia's, the Red Rooster, the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, and at local elementary schools throughout the community. She was someone who treasured the Harlem community and was in turn treasured by it. She leaves us a legacy of words, deeds, and actions. Hundreds of millions of people have read I know why the cage bird sings. This courageous story remains particularly moving given that the topic of rape and sexual abuse was rarely ever spoken or written about during Dr. Angelou's generation. This universal work opened the door of conversation for many on this subject and it, it is regarded not only as an incredible literary accomplishment but also as a catalyst of awareness and advocacy. The poem quote, phenomenal woman, quite possibly her magnum opus in prose, a work which has grown and transcended over the years into the black woman's national anthem. And she leaves us with the words of, quote, a brave and startling truth, end quote, a poem written on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the United Nations that reveals how we can achieve peace on this earth. She wrote, when we come to it, we, this people, on this wayward floating body, created on this earth 
of this earth have the power to fashion for this earth a climate where every man and every woman can live freely without sanctimonious piety, without crippling fear. When we come to it, we must confess that we are the possible. We are the miraculous, the true wonder of this world. That is when and only when we come to it. In closing, I leave you again with the words of Dr. Angelou, who, reflecting back upon her extraordinary existence, said, quote, my life has been long and, be and believing that life loves the liver of it, I have dared to try many things, sometimes trembling, but daring still. Thank you. Senator Stewart Cousins. Thank you, Mr. President. And I want to thank Senator Perkins for uh, introducing this resolution and reminding us that uh, uh, Dr. Angelou was indeed another proud uh, resident of New York State and the village of Harlem. I had the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Angelou three times, once in a gathering of women, uh, the second time when after my first race in the resolution of my loss of 18 votes in February, uh, I was invited to, to hear Dr. Angelou, and it couldn't have been a more healing balm after a very, very traumatic and elongated time period. And then the third time was when we were dealing with marriage equality, and although it was clear and it was recorded that I was a yes vote, Dr. Angelou called anyway, and she called to talk, and she called to talk about justice and I said, but Dr. Angelou, I am a yes vote. And she says, I know. She said, but I wanted you to know that I'm here for you, for anything. She wanted me to be able to say that she'd called. She knew that I was going to, to cast the vote in the right way. As uh, Senator Perkins said, she was so many things. And everybody who's going to speak will speak uh, to her virtues and, and her great um, indelible mark that she's left. But I thought that I'd read one of, I think, the, one of her most influential poems, inspirational poems. Uh, Phenomenal Woman has become the, the national anthem uh, for black women and for women, frankly. Uh, Still I Rise, which was published in uh, 1978 in the book of that same name, is one of my uh, favorite things and certainly an inspiration, I think, to, to this day for all people and certainly for African-American people. The poem is, Still I Rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. And still, like air, I rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling. I bear the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise. I rise. Rest in peace, Dr. Angelou. 
Senator Sanders. <laughs> I wish you hadn't called me so soon after that poem. One or two speakers would have allowed what I say to have great meaning. Uh, however, I too must speak of, of the enormity of Dr. Maya Angelou. Um, now, I did not know her personally, but I'm very, very familiar with her. We, were, we spent a lot of time together. When I had great difficulties, I used to turn to her for guidance. When I found problems that I had never confronted and, and thought that there may be uh, no way out, I would grab one of her great works and, and lo and behold, it would seem to offer a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, a mighty tree has fallen. We can't get away from that. Uh, this has been quite a year in our forest. Uh, we have lost some of the greatest trees, and, and this one uh, has been, res the, the crashing has been resounding. A mighty tree has fallen. Dr. Maya Angelou, is, her body is no longer with us. We cannot argue that fact. Mighty trees exist for many purposes. They provide shade, they provide cover, they provide a certain amount of protection for the lesser trees on the ground. They serve as a model that the other trees can look to and aspire to, perhaps. When we think of artists, when we think of dancers, when we think of poets, when we think of civil rights actors, we have to also think of sages, and that, of course, was Dr. Maya Angelou, that and more. We are grateful for many things, including that Senator Perkins and all of these uh, very uh, worthy senators have come forward and, and said that we must honor her. Did you say Harlem? I thought it was, she, was, she wasn't from Queens. I, I, I thought she was from Queens all this time. She spoke so clearly of our situation there, but perhaps I was wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. A mighty tree has fallen. But if the trees do not fall in a great forest, it doesn't provide light for lesser trees. Other trees don't grow. A mighty tree must fall to provide light for other trees to grow. So the passing of Dr. Maya Angelou uh, offers an opportunity for the new generation to come up. Those inspired, those who have seen her great uh, model and say that perhaps they too can aspire. Yet, I must say that her body may have left us, but she absolutely lives. As long as she inspires youth, as long as she inspires people to say that there is more beyond where they are, that the dawn is no longer beyond their reach, then Maya Angelou lives. So we salute this mighty tree, and we look forward to the other trees that will grow in the soil that she has nourished. Thank you very much. Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to, um, again, to honor with the rest of us a phenomenal woman. I wrote this speech and I rewrote it several different times and thanks to the fact that Senator Perkins spoke before me, he took one poem and, and, um, and our leader, son, Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, took my second poem. Um, I know she was quite prolific, but, <laughs> but those, I think, are probably the two poems that most people either recognize or resonate through because of the struggle that they both represent, one being her speech at the 50th anniversary for the struggle of the UN, and the other being um, an encapsulation of her life and how she saw it and the beauty from the darkness that she was able to fashion. I, like Andrea, had the opportunity, and, and, and like um, Senator Perkins had the opportunity to, to be invited to one of her gatherings in Harlem in her brownstone and, and be at a dinner party thanks to her godson, with whom I'm very close friends, Tim. And he said, 
Auntie has invited you to dinner. And I was saying, Auntie? He said, yeah. He said, Auntie's inviting you to dinner. I said, she's inviting me to dinner? And he said, absolutely. And um, I have to tell you, there are a few people that I've ever met in my life that totally awe me. But she was certainly one. And for those of you who know what a talker I can be, um, that night I could not find words. It was a night to listen, to absorb, and just be a part of the fabric and to know how blessed I was to be among women who were personal. And you know, this was not one of those 500 people dinner. This was eight women who were invited to sit and to talk and to, to um, just discuss things. But the, but the phenomenal piece was her relationship with James Baldwin. And he was one of the first that encouraged her to write. You've heard how she was raped at the age of, some books say seven and some say eight, but at a very, very, very early and tender age. And later she raised her son Guy totally as a single mother. And for so much of her life, she experienced poverty. But at no time in her life was she not clear that there was a brighter light ahead. And each of her poems, though they start dark, they end bright and light. I had particularly chosen the one about um, Still I Rise, the last verse, because what it does is it says that you, that out of the hut of shame, that history of shame from which she came, she rose. She says, I rise, and up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and, and leaping and leaping, wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise. And into a day, clearly and wondrously clear, I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you. Seeing no one else to wishing to speak on the resolution, the question is on the resolution. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted. Senator Laval. Did I hear someone? Uh say, can we open the resolution to all the members? Anyone who does not want to be on the resolution, please notify the, uh, the desk. So ordered. Mr. President, can we go to the non-controversial uh, calendar, uh, calendar number 692. Secretary will read. Calendar number 692 by Senator Laval, Senate Print 2282, and I commend the education law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libeskella, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Senator Sanders to explain his vote. Mr. President, uh, I also want to thank Senator Laval for being kind. Uh, and uh, I had some questions over uh, his legislation, questions that this legislation could be misused. Uh, and that we could set up a situation where richer districts can uh, push away poorer districts. However, uh, he generously explained that this was neither the intent nor the purpose of this. And I feel uh, confident that these things are true. So I vote aye. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Senator Laval. Um, the uh, Transportation Committee is to meet immediately following the session in room 804, and the Labor Committee to meet immediately following session in room 511. Um, we are awaiting a motion. Do I have it? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Senator Valeski. Senator Valeski. Well, thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Senator Klein, on page 49, I offer the following amendments to calendar 762, Senate Bill 6634B, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Senator Laval. I'd like everyone to listen very, very carefully. We will be adjourning until Monday, June the 9th at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., intervening days being legislative days. On motion, the Senate stands adjourned until Monday, June 9th at 2 o'clock, intervening days being legislative days.